So the Cowboys, the Eagles, Giants, Commanders, all in the NFC East. Let's take a look at the projected win totals, the over-unders for betting purposes provided by BetMGM. To no surprise, the Eagles have 10.5, Cowboys next at 9.5, Giants 8.5, Commanders 7.5. I think the don't the Eagles seem low at ten and a half? Yeah. Doesn't that seem low? I mean, it does to me. I, I'm, I'm, I'm a Is little Is there any reason to think they're going to fall off? Not at all. I mean, the only thing you could maybe say is like, well, their schedule is going to be different. But still, for them and their football team, their schedule is very favorable. To yes, I mean, we looked at it the other day. Remember when we were going? It's one of those again where you can kind of look at it and go, I clearly could see them being eight and two, right? By their week ten by or you know seven and two, whatever. I don't think it's a crazy thought. It's a little harder, certainly. I guess they're playing the, you know, Super Bowl hangover type of thing, which could be a real thing here with them. And especially when you're the when you know you were the better team and you blew a a, a ten point halftime lead. That is one there. You know, you do worry about it. It's hard to come over. back from. Yeah. Right, right. I mean, look at the 49ers the year after they blew the exactly ten point lead with seven minutes left. Exactly. Now, injuries. We're an yeah, issue. contributed. And, and you know, we, we do this every year. Yeah. We spend seven months talking about what is possibly to be. The one thing we know is injuries are going to happen. They're going to change everything. We're going to revise our analysis on the fly for so many teams based upon when injuries happen, who gets the short end of the injury stick, and that could change everything for the Eagles this year without question. But if they stay healthy, and you're right, you have to overcome – that disappointment. Yeah. How do you go back to zero and zero? When you're going to be the team that everyone's gunning for in the NFC, it's the Eagles and the 49ers who stand out above everyone else. It's going to be a challenge. I still think 10 and a half is low. I do too. I think 10 and a half is low. And, and you know, again, I don't know. Do they go 15 and two or 14 and three? I don't know about that, but I would just be absolutely shocked if they weren't one of the top two or three teams in the NFC. Now, like the, the, the rest of the division, I think is some real valuable conversation. Well, what do you think about your giants at eight and a half? Well, I, I, the, a lot of giants fans at that event last night, kind of accepting or bracing for yes a, a reality check this year. yeah well i think last year like everything fell the right way for the giants you know and I, I don't mean that by luck it's just the schedule uh they got hot you know they they played the right way but like did we ever look at their team and go oh wow they're super talented across the board and they're gonna be dominant no, we always were like, hey, Daniel Jones is playing good, and Wink Martindale's really creative on defense, and Brian Dayball's just doing all the right things on the offensive side of the ball, and they kind of just, you know, uh, kind of outlast you in the game and hang around and hang around, and you make a mistake, and they win. It's hard to do that. And then, of course, we know their schedule is is harder this year with a little bit more primetime games and a little bit more of a bullseye on their back to be, you know, I'm one that sits here and certainly goes, I'm not sure the Giants go back to the playoffs. They would be one of those teams that I would mark as were in the playoffs last year, but are out this year, and the new half comes in this year. They play all the teams of the AFC East and all the teams of the NFC West. That is a sneaky component. We've talked about this to the schedule formula. Half of your games almost are based on this, where it clicks, and it clicks this year on to – AFC East, NFC West, not exactly an easy draw. Now, half of the NFC West, I think, right now is down. Yeah. The other half is up. Right. But you also throw in that one extra game, that 17th game. That's how we have a Super Bowl rematch. It lands on a little mini rotation of where you landed in your division with a team from another division, and it lands on the West this year, so the Chiefs and the Eagles play. So, And it can be that one game here and one game there that makes the difference. It could be. And, and you know, we, we, we were kind of hitting on it last night, right? Where, I mean, again, you know, I'm not – I don't look at the Giants as a juggernaut. I still look at them as a team that's, like, ascending on an upward trajectory and still, you know, fixing and getting their team exactly where they want it. But what's crazy is – the point Jason Garrett brought up last night. Are there five great teams in the NFC? And it's like, no. It's Eagles, 49ers, and TBD. Yeah, I, I would put the Cowboys in the at least the upper group of the conference. I mean, and certainly, I, I think they're clearly a three. I don't know if you want to call them great or whatever. I think there's a lot of talent on their roster. I right. could say they're good for sure. But then, yeah, after that, you started to get in conversation. You go... You know, yeah, I, how good are some of these other teams? Seattle, I think, is a team that you just brought up that's kind of on the cusp there 
of maybe injecting themselves into the conversation. But then after that, you get into, okay, wait, Detroit's, you know, kind of there. And, you know, we see some teams that got some potential, but I don't think we're ready to put them there yet. Yeah, I mean, the Lions are the darlings yeah. of the NFC this year, right. but they haven't done anything. They're carrying that extra baggage. They're going to be a measuring stick game when they've won nothing and not even been to the playoffs, haven't won a playoff game in 31 years, I would be irritated if I was a Lions fan that why are you putting all this on us? Yeah. Give us a chance to at least get to the playoffs before <laughs> right. you start targeting right. us as a as an A game where you're going to bring everything you have to try to beat us. Like, it just doesn't seem right. Like, we would have laughed a year ago at the prospect of the Lions being the team that opens the season against anyone. Yeah. Like, no way. No, I but know. But there is that shine now with that franchise and we'll see if they can continue it's jarring it's jarring just the nfc in general like your, your vikings team who i think we everybody expects to come back a little more to reality right tampa bay i mean they were in the playoffs they were eight and nine and they weren't even that good really i mean come on they weren't even eight and nine good they just were lucky and they were in the worst one of the worst divisions in football and that helped them to be eight and nine right i mean they got absolutely throttled by a five seed at home in the playoffs. It's just, it's crazy when you unpack the NFC to see who and where this other team or threats are going to come you from. You know, I'm always pessimistic about yeah. the Vikings, but let's look at it from a different perspective. Okay. For a change. Wow. What is going on with you? What did well, you drink last night? Holy crap. Oh, they had that. Did you, did you have one of the old fashions? They I did. Old fashioned I bar. didn't. Yeah. Woo. Man, that's all alcohol. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. That yeah. is, I mean, that, and it's a lot in that drink. Like, right. man, I had one and I'm still kind of feeling it. <laughs> Maybe I had two. I can't remember. <laughs> but, um, okay, the Vikings offense is going to be as good as it was last year. I would expect that. Possibly better. Maybe. Talking to Kevin O'Connell last week, 26-minute conversation. You can find it at the NFL on NBC YouTube page. Reason to think they're going to be even better with Cousins. Same he's, guy in his ear. He's buying the Kool-Aid, no, everybody. No, I'm not. I'm saying <laughs> I'm I'm taking a break from my pessimistic nature <laughs> just to say there's a case to be made that the Vikings are going to be a threat this year. Yeah. And one of the ingredients in it is everybody's like, ah, they're going to suck. Right. That That's good. Yeah. You'd rather right. that than, oh, they're going to be so good because then you have that chip on your shoulder and you don't get complacent. The defense, it can't be any worse than no, it was it last year. It won't be And worse. I know all those guys are gone, but it doesn't matter. The defense stunk. Yeah. So it can't be any worse. Brian Flores is there. You were talking about Flores last night and how great he's going to be. And, yeah. And, you know, the perfect counter to the right. Kevin O'Connell personality. Exactly. We talked about that yesterday. Yeah. I, said, I, I Look, I know they won a lot of close, tough games last year that easily could have gone the other way, and there was a certain magic to it all. And maybe they'll win fewer games but maybe they'll be better. They could be better. I can see that. I maybe they'll, maybe they'll be able record, to get to the division around and get their asses kicked. Right. I can see the them having a worse record, but a better team. That, yep. that, that happens every now and then. Uh, we'll see, but it's still, it's, it's okay. crazy. Question. NFC East. Yeah. Last year, they sent three teams to the playoffs. Yeah. Is it more likely they'll send three or one this year? Hmm. I think if you made me choose that, I, I would probably be the one that would say I, I'd, I'd go with one, but I don't think three is crazy here. I mean, I don't. You know, you look at the state of the North, that's kind of up in the, up for grabs. The NFC South, we know, is not that great. You know, and, and the one thing with the NFC East, we know Philly, okay. I think Dallas is one of the three best teams in the NFC in general. And then the Giants, you know, I'm a little reluctant, but the other one is Washington, who we know has talent there. And it's just what can they be with Sam Howell? You know, they improved the O-line. They got good, really damn good receivers. They got them running back. You know, the defense we know is legit. So they'd be another team to where I don't think three in the NFC East is crazy again, but if you made me bet, I'd probably still go one. Yeah, I think it's one instead of three, and more likely it would be two. Yeah, which, you know, exactly. Pete does these, so yeah. the obvious answer right. isn't the one we get to pick. So <laughs> thanks for nothing, Pete. Who's got the tougher week one draw, the Eagles at the Patriots or the Cowboys at the Giants? Mm. I, 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 would, I would say Philly at New England. Yeah. You know? They got seven months to get ready for you. Yes. Tommy's going to be there, we think, that right. night, unless he's playing for another team. Right. I, I mean, we expect him there. Billy O'Brien, the new offense, right? We know their defense is really good. I would expect that, you know, the Belichicks and Gerard Mayo got some answers for the things Philly does on that side of the ball. You know? Philly coming off. Yes, it's your first game. You got to go up to New England. It's not easy playing up there. 
right? New England pissed off that they didn't get to the playoffs and they're trying to change things around. I, I would go that. I mean, neither one's easy, but I, I'll say Philly. And they know they need to get their wins where they can. Exactly. And Bill Belichick, a little hot seat, maybe. Yeah, first time they're dealing with some yeah. of that talk, for sure. Okay, of the teams in the NFC East, yeah. who is the most likely to start 0-2? Eagles have Patriots-Cardinals. Cowboys have Giants-Jets. Giants have Cowboys-Cardinals. And the Commanders have Cardinals. That can't be right. That can't be right. It can't be Cardinals. Cardinals can't be playing the, the Eagles, the Giants, and the Commanders, Pete. Yeah, Pete, Pete. The, the, unless there's another Arizona team I'm not aware of. <gasps> Unless Flagstaff has gotten a team, Pete, Pete, I don't think the that, Cardinals are playing three games Eagles, in two and weeks. And I should have known this. The Eagles have the Patriots and the Vikings. Yes. The Eagles have the Patriots and the Vikings on the short week. The Commanders have the Cardinals and the Broncos. Well, Pete's such a, like, first off, let's get Pete's like such a, I, you know, he's a millennial, I guess, but he's got more of like the new age. He's like one of these guys that's like, He's looking up the news. He's producing the show. He's on social media, and he's putting things in the document and are uh, all at the same time. If I know Pete, right? That's what he does. He's a multitasker to the utmost. Uh, but now, getting back to the schedule question, if I had to pick one team to be zero and two there, I think I'd go with Dallas. I, I mean, it, I just don't see Philly losing, you know, two games. The Giants with Arizona on the schedule. You know, that makes me think, okay, we they can win one of the two, right? Washington, I do think, is better than Arizona or Denver. I expect them to win one or two. You know, Dallas going up to the New York Giants and then having to play the New York Jets, who we know are super talented, That's that would be the team I'd pick. I think the fact that both the Giants and the Commanders have the Cardinals take it's, them out of take the equation. Take them out, right. You've got the Eagles and you've got the Cowboys, and I agree with you. I think it's the Cowboys. The idea of the Eagles losing two games in five days, Sunday, Thursday, that's incomprehensible, but crazier things have happened. No doubt. And if they get knocked wobbly by the Patriots. That could be an and, effect. And right. you got Brian Flores, who, who's who got that Patriot DNA and sees what Bill Belichick did, sure. turn around a game plan quickly or refine the game plan they have ready to go because yeah. they know that they've got the Eagles week two, so they're going to get ready for both of their games. I think they got Tampa Bay to open and then the Eagles yeah. so they can spend a little extra time on the Eagles because who knows what Tampa Bay is going to be. I don't know. I don't you know. like him. You like him it's very the, much. Uh, Kurt Cousins. He's a my quarterback. It's the aftermath <laughs> of the old fashions last night. Kevin O'Connell got him bought. He's bought in over here. Guy has an interview. It's go Vikings. They're going to be better. Here we go. No, no I, 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 I would like it for my son because he gets so caught up in it. Like he was, <laughs> I can't wait for this season. It's like, just, you can. Yeah. You can. All right. Because I can definitely wait for not getting the text of, I hate this, I can't do this anymore. I need a different team. Gosh. Yeah. He well, goes through that every year. Yeah. I need a different team. I, I need a different team. Right. It's like, it doesn't matter what team you follow. At some point, they're going to pull your heart out and stomp on Yeah. It. I mean, you, you're not going to win a Super Bowl every it. single year. Right. You're going to have to deal with disappointment. Right. You just want Sometimes a little you have to deal with it for then. 50 years <laughs> or longer, or uh, 60 years. I hope it keeps going, baby. I don't, I don't want you to win one while we're working together. I want this to come to the very end. I want us to be old men and we're still sitting here going, oh, hope I see the Vikings before the I really, I really don't <laughs> want my son to have to watch the Super Bowl from the cemetery with his phone <laughs> propped up on top they of my stone. They finally did it, Dad. You'd be so proud. The stone that has the never-ending loop oh, of Aaron Rodgers, solar-powered, guys like Mike Florio, don't waste your time reading crap like that. <laughs> he could just, I guess, wire his phone and he could broadcast. He could mirror it. I mean, who the hell knows? By that time, you just blink your eyes and the game comes up 3D in front of you as a hologram. Maybe. But regardless, I want to be able to go to the Super Bowl after I'm dead and gone. I would like to be able to go to the Super Bowl with him. I'd like to be able to sit with him at the Super Bowl and watch them lose. Wow. That's what I really there you go. look forward there, to. There's right. my – he's back. Damn, he's back. It took a little while. He was very positive on a Tuesday. Hi, it's Mike Florio. Thanks for watching PFT on YouTube. Hit subscribe for the latest news and analysis from Pro Football Talk.